And welcome to Hannity. And this is a Fox News alert. Fox News has confirmed a disturbing report from the Daily Caller. A list containing the names of Republican lawmakers was found on the left-wing gunman who was targeting GOP lawmakers earlier this week for assassination. Newt Gingrich, Michelle Malkin, Matt Schlapp, Patrick J. Buchanan, Mike Myers will all be here with reaction. But first, the unelected fourth branch of government, the deep state, is trying to overturn the results of November's election and throw the this president out of office. So how did a bunch of unelected bureaucrats get so much power, feel so emboldened that they think they can undermine a duly elected president of the United States and just take over? Plus, after this week's left wing assassination attempt on Republican lawmakers, the left's come together kumbaya moment, like I said last night, is nothing more than an illusion. It is a farce to hide the left's true intentions. We will expose all of this hypocrisy in tonight's very important opening monologue. All right, so the unelected fourth branch of government is now being aided and abetted by the destroy Trump media, all in a massive effort to damage and destroy President Trump. Now, this week alone, we have seen unprecedented and potentially criminal leaks from the deep state to the liberal Washington Post. Now, the liberal smear machine is masquerading as a news outlet in their reporting, citing, of course, once again, anonymous sources that the special counsel is now investigating the president for possible obstruction of justice and that Robert Mueller is also looking into Jared Kushner's finances and business dealings. Okay, how is it possible that they dare to leak information almost every single day without any fear of consequences? And by the way, they're wrong so often. President Trump responding to that report today, tweeting, quote, I am being investigated for firing the FBI director by the man who told me to fire the FBI director. That's a witch hunt. Now, the president, of course, is referring to the uh, deputy attorney general, Rosenstein, who in a two page memo laid out the strongest case on why Comey needed to be fired. Now, Rosenstein, now he wants an investigation by the special counsel to investigate why the president fired Comey and whether or not this was the right thing to do. This is insanity. And by the way, the special counsel now has 13 attorneys, and on top of that, including Hillary Clinton's attorney and multiple attorneys that donated to both Obama and Hillary Clinton. Now, predictably, the destroyed Trump media, they're jumping all over this. They are, of course, hoping that it will lead to President Trump's downfall. Let me remind you, the Washington Post, ABC News, the New York Times, CNN, NBC, they have all gotten it wrong on this issue. They all at this point with the American public should have zero credibility. So we have to take these latest so-called smoking gun reports come out late night every night with a grain of salt. Last night, the Deputy Attorney General, Rod Rosenstein, he issued this statement about trusting these stories about the quote coming out of the fake news media he said this. He said Americans should exercise caution before accepting as true any stories attributed to quote anonymous officials, particularly when they do not identify the country, let alone the branch or the agency of government with which with the alleged sources supposedly are affiliated. Americans should be skeptical about anonymous allegations. Now, the Department of Justice has a long-established policy to neither confirm nor deny such allegations. You know what? I don't trust any of them at this point. On top of that, James Comey, remember, he testified last week, the media has been so dead wrong when it comes to stories about Russia. And by the way, while all of that is alarming, it proves everything we have been saying on this program. This deep state, this fourth branch of government, as we're calling it, doesn't care about getting the truth to you, the American people, and of course the media, they're the willing accomplices. Their goal is the exact opposite here. They are selectively leaking information, intelligence information, that is meant to damage, in this case, the President of the United States of America, which is exactly what we have been seeing now almost on a nightly basis. Here's a perfect example. James Comey told President Trump he wasn't under investigation. Somehow. That's the only one thing that never got leaked to the press. Why? The reason should be obvious. And what's worse is the growing targets for the deep state. They've been successful in totally slowing down the president's agenda, Congress's agenda. 
Now, so far, they haven't been able to stop him, which means the deep state is now going after anyone who's even close to the president, including his family and White House advisors, and by the way, even people in the media. The deep state now plans to create as much collateral damage as possible, targeting everyone and everyone from the president straight on down. So what we're seeing now is this unelected fourth branch of government looking for retribution, overturning a duly elected election. And by the way, they're not going to stop until this president is either stopped or thrown out of office. Here's the problem. Whoever is leaking this information to the media, they need to be arrested. They need to be prosecuted. Every one of them needs to be put in jail. Why hasn't every Obama holdover been fired? Why have the leakers you know, not been discovered and arrested at this point? Now, these people have now become a clear and present danger to this country and to you and the things that you care about deeply. Now, because these people now have, of course, done this to the country, well, that raises a lot of questions. Of course, now we have the left and their vicious and vile daily hatred that is now tearing this country apart and creating a climate where what we saw last week is now, in some ways, even encouraged by some. Now, last night's so-called show of unity, remember, I'm not falling for it, the kumbaya moment at the congressional baseball game, it was nothing more than an illusion. Now, this week's left-wing assassination attempt on these Republican lawmakers is the culmination of endless, vitriolic, rage, animus, hatred towards the president and Republicans. I'm not saying anybody but this individual is responsible, but this atmosphere is so unhealthy. And those that are unhealthy, are they susceptible to potential influence of daily lies, misinformation, conspiracy theories? Remember this stunning video from this week. everything that we have seen can anyone say that they're surprised that a left-wing lunatic went on a shooting rampage for example just this week an opening night performance Shakespeare's Julius Caesar New York City of course featured a Donald Trump look-alike getting what savagely murdered then of course this most graphic example that we always warn you about before putting it up on the screen Kathy Griffin CNN host posing like an ISIS fighter with a fake and bloody and severed head of President Trump. And that's just a few examples of this left-wing vitriol. Remember back in, in January, Madonna literally threatening, fantasizing about blowing up the White House. Remember this. Yes, I'm angry. Yes, I am outraged. Yes, I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. Thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. Now, leftists, Hollywood liberals, they aren't alone in viciously attacking the president. Then you got the Destroy Trump media. Now for months, 11 months almost, they have done the exact same thing, if not a lot worse. Take a look at what so-called news looks like. It's real fake news, though. Take a look. I understand where you were coming from. I understand why you liked him. I, but th this man is lying to you. Trump's critics, those who are worried about this president and this White House, saw a live special television event brought to you by narcissism, thin skin, chaos, and deeply personal grievances. This was a white lash. This was a white lash against a changing country. It was a white lash against a black president in part. And that's the part where the pain comes. When he said today, America first, it was not just the racial, I mean, the, I shouldn't say racial, the Hitlerian uh, background to it. This is a very sad night for the country. Um, you can't polish this turd. When he calls you fake yeah. news, what if you had called him a fake, a fake president? He's there with his wife. He's there with his whole family. As I say, like the Romanovs, he's got, <laughs> he's got Jared, who might be a part of this story, like hint, hint. And he's got his daughter, Ivanka. It's like a traveling Roman, uh, royal Romanov family. You can't defend what the president of the United States just said. If I took a dump on his great. desk, you would defend it. <laughs> And now we're supposed to believe all these media folks and Democrats are preaching unity.
but yet they have done nothing but smear, slander, besmirch this president for months. In case you forgot, take a look. This executive order was, was mean-spirited and un-American. Republican leaders and President Trump don't give a about the people they were trying to hurt. I will fight every day until he is impeached. Impeach 45. Impeach 45. This is a bunch of scumbags. That's what they are. Those are very we're strong words, Congressman. We're all organized around making money. We've seen nothing that we can work, that well, I can work with President Bush on. And I'm trying really hard to find something positive uh, this morning had three tweets. I was thinking he was more of a creature that stalked the night, that these things just came out at night like a vampire. And they tweeted these things, but now it's spread to the morning. And after Wednesday's left-wing assassination attempt, the Huffington Post, they had to take down an article calling for the president's execution. Take a look at the headline we showed you last night. Impeachment is no longer enough. Donald Trump must face justice. And here's the subheadline: Impeachment, removal from office are only the first steps for America to be redeemed. Donald Trump must be prosecuted for treason and, if convicted in a court of law, executed. Beyond disturbing. But there are plenty of other examples. Earlier this week, liberal Hollywood actor, left-wing activist Mark Ruffalo, he called on his followers to sign a petition that demands NBC News stop hiring conservatives for on-air positions, white conservatives. We've also seen people like Robert De Niro and Mickey Rourke and Marilyn Manson advocating for violence against this president and outside of Hollywood. And of course, you have groups like Black Lives Matter. What do we want? Dead cops. When do we want them now? Pigs in a blanket. Fry them like bacon. Hillary Clinton supported that group. President Obama met with them in the White House. They've been spewing hate for years. And by the way, where was their criticism of Kathy Griffith and our ISIS posts? Take a look at Black Lives Matter. Pigs in a blanket! Fry them like bacon! Pigs in a blanket! Fry them like bacon! Pigs in a blanket! Fry them like bacon! Also, we have all seen the out-of-control anger and rage that is springing up all over college campuses where, you know, showing you video, Berkeley, California, early this year, protesters starting a riot. Why? Because a conservative was going to speak at the university, the home of the free speech movement? Now, while all these examples of hatred are shocking and alarming, they're not new. Now, the roots of the left's rage go back decades, if not further. In fact, it is part of the movement's DNA. You know, groups like the May Day Labor Movement, the Weather Underground, remember them? Led by Barack Obama's pals Bill Ayers and Bernadine Dorn, the Occupy Wall Street Movement, all started with subscribe to radical left-wing hate-filled ideology advocating for using violence to their advantage in their political objectives. So all the Democrats and the left are putting their hate on pause for 24 hours last night, not even 24 hours. You can bet they're only getting started when it comes to the president, conservatives, Republicans in this country. Here with Reaction, the author of the brand new book, Understanding Trump. It's on Amazon.com, bookstores everywhere, former Speaker of the House, Fox News contributor Newt Gingrich. Look, there's been a long history. I, 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 we can argue, okay, we're not dueling in this country. And we went through the 60s in, in this period of horrible assassinations from Martin Luther King Jr. And, and Robert F. Kennedy, Malcolm X, Kent State, and all these other cases. But in my lifetime, there's never been anything like this. The, they will not accept this president as duly elected. And I don't think it stops at all. Your thoughts? Well, first of all, what you just did was pretty overpowering. Uh, that is a lot of material, and it's a lot of vivid uh, proof where people are looking at the actual film. It's not, you know, you're not making anything up, you're sharing with them the film. So I do think that at a minimum, this resembles the late 60s, early 70s, the anti-Vietnam War period, the uh, counterculture, the free speech movement, all those things that came together uh, to create turmoil in that period. Uh, <clears throat> I think this is different. I think the 
frenzy on the left is deeper and more rabid than it was. I think that their strength in Hollywood and the newsroom uh, and on campuses is bigger than it was. So it's a real fight. You know, but I was thinking at the very beginning, <clears throat> when you were describing uh, the Washington Post story, it may be that the Deputy Attorney General now has a new assignment, which is to create a special counsel to look into leaks from the special counsel. Um, you know, <laughs> it is a, it, you it's know illegal absurd that sounds? to be leaking. Uh, <clears throat> well, I'm just saying, if you look, I don't understand what Rosenstein's memo was supposed to tell us. Uh, is he saying that the Washington Post lied? That, uh, that that's not true, and if so, how does he know it? Uh, does he say, well, they might be true, but don't pay attention to them? I didn't find his memo particularly enlightening. The Washington Post, once again, has an unnamed source who makes a series of allegations uh, which may be true. Uh, it doesn't help us any to have page one make an allegation, and then the bureaucrats of justice piously explain that they can't tell you whether or not what was probably a leak from one of them is true. And I, I think uh, if he's serious about stopping leaks, he, not, maybe not this first round, but by the time we have three or four leaks, which we will get from the special counsel's office, we got I two think in he's going to be forced to create a new special... Well, he's going to be forced to create a new special counsel to look into the special counsel's office. But, but think of what the president tweeted out today. I'm being investigated for firing the FBI director by the man who told me to fire the FBI director right. in great specificity and detail in a, in a strongly worded, what, two, two right. and a half page statement. That's insanity to me. Look, I, I don't blame Trump for being, well, it is insanity, and I don't blame Trump for being frustrated, although I think he'd be better off to shift gears and go to a much more positive uh, series of tweets because they, they're doing so many good things nobody's learning about because the left is effectively getting them sucked into this fight where all they talk about all day, every day is junk. Uh, and and and, uh, and despite all that, by the way, Trump is still at, uh, today was at forty one percent approval, despite an unending barrage of six by months. By the way, one poll of lies at fifty, and but smears go ahead. and innuendo. That's right. Yeah. But my point what is, do you make of, the what do you make would, of this you know, assassination attempt targeting Republicans this week? Well, I think I think you said it right. First of all, when you have an individual act like that, it's the responsibility of the individual. He was guilty. Uh, and I think that we should focus on him. The background noise effect is scary. Uh, the number of people willing to, you know, it goes all the way back to your, your uh, showing Madonna. I had forgotten. I thought she said she dreamed of uh, bombing the White House. She actually talks about, I think, how she thought about uh, blowing up the White House, which normally, by the way, would be considered a crime. Uh, we were very strict about protecting the presidency, no matter who you are. Imagine in 2010 with the uh, Tea Party movement, if a Tea Party movement person had talked about blowing up the White House with Barack Obama in it, I mean, the national media would have gone crazy. Uh, we got to take a break. There's one metric out over 12,000 times at least on Twitter talking about assassinating our president. All right, we'll have much more with the former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich, right after the break. And